We realized early on in the traffic stop on March 1st that we were dealing with a very large and profitable criminal organization. A major catalytic converter theft ring is busted. Police say they got the top people involved in trafficking millions of dollars worth of stolen car parts. Thank you for joining us for KGW News at 5 o'clock. I'm Laurel Porter. And I'm David Mulko. That investigation has been coming together for over a year and now appears to have paid off in a very big way. Tim Gordon joins us now in Beaverton. Tim, we are talking about tens of millions of dollars in car parts stolen essentially one at a time. Right, David, and this was a theft and racketeering ring that police say was centered here in Washington County, but working throughout the West, and it did $22 million in damage. This is some of the evidence Beaverton police showed off today. A thousand catalytic converters, just a fraction of those stolen to be trafficked for their precious metals. The investigation that began in late 2021 culminated with the search of this Lake Oswego home and seven other locations this past week. At a home in Aurora, police found a comfortable living situation complete with a pool and a huge stash of the stolen items. The search led to the seizure of over 3,000 catalytic converters hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, a high-end vehicle, and jewelry. Beaverton police detectives led the investigation, working with several other local agencies and the Oregon Department of Justice. This past March, a traffic stop got a top suspect. Police say was hauling 100 of the stolen parts worth $80,000. We realized early on in the traffic stop on March 1st that we were dealing with a very large and profitable criminal organization. The driver, 32-year-old Tanner Lee Hellbush of Beaverton, was in a Washington County court Thursday facing a load of charges. And this past week, the raid that police say got the leader of the ring, 32-year-old Brandon Doyle, arrested at the Lake Oswego home. Doyle, seen here on his Facebook page, is believed to have trafficked over 44,000 stolen catalytic converters since January of 2021, with an estimated street value of more than $22 million. He faces is a 72 count indictment. They were renting a summer lake house. Um, I think it's important to note that uh, the defendants in this case were living a nice life. Um, and they were doing so because they were stealing catalytic converters from people or receiving stolen catalytic converters from people. You, it, it's, you can only laugh because you're in such shock. Lake Oswego neighbor Jason Frankel says Doyle and others at the house were friendly and like to have a good time, but he's glad it's over. You, you have to be. I mean, the fact is, is that as nice as they can seem, you don't know what they're doing. Investigators say they knew exactly what the organized crime ring was doing. The Beaverton police chief thanked the public for patience while they built their case. Your patience has allowed us to take this organization down from the top instead of just scratching the surface level. Yeah, 14 defendants so far in the investigation continues. A Doyle faces aggravated theft, a money laundering and racketeering charges in those 72 counts he's facing. Police now couldn't say how big of a dent this is going to put in this particular crime locally, but it sure seems like a good start to a problem so many of us have experienced. Laurel. It sure is great to see. Thank you, Tim. It was a less than memorable trip to the Rose City for one Canadian softball team. Their bus was hit by thieves not once, but twice. Mike Benner explains. This is video of the Fraser Valley Fusion 2006 softball team cheering during a tournament at North Portland's Delta Park over the weekend. We had a lot of fun. We came second, which was awesome. Um, we played in the finals against a really good team, and they were really nice and friendly to us. So we had an awesome weekend on the field. The key there is on the field because off of it was a different story. A series of unfortunate events, right? Coach Caitlin Cameron says after her team, made up of 15 and 16-year-old girls from British Columbia, wrapped up play on Sunday. They returned to the team bus, parked not far from the fields. The door was kind of left a jar and um, they opened it up to find out that there was a whole bunch of stuff stolen off the, the front of the bus. Backpacks stuffed with cash, a laptop, headphones and clothes, even the girls' passports, all gone. The kids that lost stuff had that the moment of kind of panic and, and that. So then it would just kind of like, okay, don't worry about the stuff right now. Let's console the girls and make sure everybody's okay. Believe it or not, the bus break-in at Delta Park wasn't the team's only misfortune. 
One day earlier, the catalytic converter was stolen from the team's bus while it was parked outside this Holiday Inn Express near the airport. The team from just outside of Vancouver, B.C. never could have imagined their trip to Portland getting any worse until it did when those personal belongings were taken off the bus. And the team we played in the final game, they reached out to us too after they what, what they heard what happened. So, I mean, it's been kind of, in that sense, it was kind of nice to see everybody reach out and kind of help us there at the park after the game. So, good people. And perhaps that explains why Coach Cameron, despite what happened over the weekend, is not opposed to returning to Portland in the future. I will definitely back, probably not with a bus though. In North Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. A wildland firefighter died while fighting the big swamp fire near Oak Ridge. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office shared this photo of firefighters standing to honor Colin Hagen as his body was flown to the Roseburg Regional Airport. Authorities say Hagen died after he was hit by a falling tree at about 1230 yesterday afternoon. He was doing the job that our firefighters do, that everybody knows that they do, working hard out on a, in a very tough landscape, a tough environment. The big swamp fire and several others in the area were started by lightning strikes about 10 days ago. Well, monkey pox cases are up with a new vaccine strategy to split vials about to get underway. The Oregon Health Authority now says a total of 95 cases have been reported in the state, 57 of them in Multnomah County. Daisy Caballero joins us now. Daisy, we're really getting a better sense here of which communities locally are affected. Yeah, David, that's exactly right. Health officials are still trying to learn more about this virus, whether it's researching how it spreads to finding ways to distribute vaccines fast to determining who is most at risk for contracting this virus. We are definitely going to be facing this disease and see this disease circulating in our community for some time, months, potentially years. As of Thursday morning, 95 monkeypox or MPV cases have been reported in the state of Oregon. 57 of those have been found right here in Multnomah County. Almost all of the reported cases have been found in men. Only three are from women. But... Why is that? In the laboratory, it has been demonstrated, I believe, that um, the monkeypox virus can be isolated from sperm. So it could be transmitted in a sexual um, way. It may also be that individuals have lesions in the perirectal or in the genital region um, that may be unnoticed, that may be transmitting the virus. Statistics also reveal that almost a third of those cases throughout the state have identified as Hispanic or Latinx, which has health officials further expanding preventative messages and efforts to that specific community. And that mirrors national numbers where they represent a, a similar proportion, and that's more um, than their percentage in the population. So they are, they do seem to be getting this or at least being identified um, as having monkeypox at a higher rate. Lane County has reported 17 MPV cases, and their health advisor says he's happy with how quickly preventative measures are being rolled out, like vaccines. Having been through my share of disease outbreaks over the last 35 years, I'm really quite heartened that this is an outbreak where we already have an FDA approved vaccine and antivirals um, that doesn't always happen with outbreaks in the past and COVID is certainly one of those examples. Oregon has so far received 6,800 vaccines and distributed nearly 2,200. They add that more are on the way, hopefully within the coming weeks. Now, I also checked with Washington's numbers, and according to their Department of Health, Clark County has three cases, but 213 throughout Washington state. David? Yeah, still not a lot of vaccine out there, Daisy. Thank you. Well, let's give you a quick preview now of what's coming up at 6 on the story. Tensions ran high at a Salem-Kaiser school board meeting on Tuesday night as people discussed topics like school resource officers, concealed carrying on campus, and... LGBTQ plus issues. Now, during the meeting, some were labeled as racist and transphobic, and one parent said people took photos of their license plates. That full report tonight at 6 on the story. Multnomah County just got more money to rebuild the Burnside Bridge. The bridge will be able to withstand a major earthquake when construction is finished. Multnomah County says the $5 million grant is from the U.S. Department of Transportation. The project is expected to start in 2023. In total, it will cost $895 million to finish the bridge. For more info, visit BurnsideBridge.org.
Well, a relatively flat day on Wall Street at day after better than expected inflation numbers. Speaking of high, or should we say higher prices, let's talk about cars, because if you own one or you want to buy one, yep, it's going to cost you more. According to AAA, the average yearly cost to own and operate a new vehicle this year is nearly $11,000. This is up more than $1,000 from last year. The average nearly cost there you saw was less than 10 grand. Not surprisingly, overall fuel prices are the most significant factor when it comes to that jump. But let's take a look at those numbers, which are thankfully now trending downward. National average at $3.99 a gallon. This is the first time that's been below $4 since early March in the Northwest. As, you, as you've likely noticed, it is still higher than that, though. In Oregon, a gallon is going to cost you $4.88. 481 in Washington. The good news, those numbers in both states are less than they were a week ago.